I just built a Ryzen 9 3950X computer. It's pretty sweet. I'm going to detail the components I used and the process it takes to build one of these. One thing I do not cover, however, is the actual wiring of it. That's kind of self-explanatory. And I'm not going to cover the final testing results. I'm just covering the build. So stick around. Let's cover that. If you like this video, five different ways you can support me. You can like this video, subscribe to my channel, comment anything below, share this video, and I also have a little Amazon wish list if you want to buy something. Help support me. That'd be pretty cool. I'm including a little timeline here, so if you want to skip ahead to the part that interests you the most, that's fine. Just skip ahead. All right, so today we're going to unbox Roseville computer case. Computer case. Got the front panel. Few spots for uh, bay enclosures, 3.5, and then the small one. Got a spot for fans, which are extra. Also got a top for the fans. Got it, that's included, and the back has a spot for the fan, which is included. And bottom mount power supply. Got some cool connectors for the hard drives. I think we've got a slide out tray for a few things. We've got a few wires to connect into the front. A three pin wire for the rear fan, three pin wire for the top fan, and a three pin wire for the front fan. Now, when I was looking at this, what I did not like was the obscene amount of ports. We only have one USB 3 port and two USB 2 ports. So I decided I was going to buy a panel for that to compensate for the fact that I wanted more ports. Anything with more than a few USB 3 ports, the price of the tower ended up being quite ridiculous. So uh, I decided I was just going to buy a panel up here and just slide that in and customize a cheaper case to get more of what I'm looking for. This is my media dashboard that I bought. I'll put a link in the description. But not only does this give me a few USB 2 ports, it gives me a couple extra USB 3 ports and my eSATA expansion if I want to go into any sort of external hard drive. Oh, this I did not realize. There's actually a connector for the 12 volt. And I like the SD card option as well. I probably only use the one card. I can't ever imagine using any of these other ones, but it's all there. And to get these to work, I might have to put some sort of an adapter, but I'm not too concerned about it. I'll probably just use the ones on either here or here and just make a mental note that the other side is not connected. But we're gonna put this into the case. So inside the box we have a few screws, we have a manual with some fine instructions. Boy, you can imagine what those only say. I'm sure you can figure it out. We have quite a few cables that connect to the motherboard. So let's pop one of these panels off. That just pushes out. Let's undo these cables and make it easier to feed it if I do that now. Exactly why this is not fitting into my hard drive. I imagine it has something to do with this. Oh, that's nice. Yes. So let me take off the other side of this case. Panel aside. Okay, now it slides all the way in. And it looks like this mounting hole is flush with the screw hole. So I can either mount this box with a couple screws or I can mount them with the bracket that comes with this. Power. So I'm going to put this on here. It's hard to do with one hand. Okay, and that's locked. Let's lock the other side. Okay, and my box is in there actually pretty good. 
don't really feel the need to put extra screws in there. However, if I'm pulling and pushing on connectors, it might need extra support. So I think I'm going to actually throw a screw in the top one on each of these sides and then put that panel back where that was. Okay, so I put a few screws in there and now I'm going to connect the, this just to give it a little more, a little more grip. Okay, and that panel is in there pretty good. So this is the budget case. On the box, it says it's a Challenger 11 147 153. I don't remember the exact part number. That doesn't seem right to me. This is the Roseville Challenger case. It's a bit of a budget case for a few dollars extra. I've got a media box. I don't know the name of this. I will have to find it. I'll put a link down below. But I converted my budget box into something a little more useful. And my only other concern was that I want a way to have cons controlling each fan independently. The th there's three fans that come with the, the box. There's the front one, there's the top one, and there's the rear one. And then there's going to be an extra two that will be on the door. We'll have a total of five case fans. I wanted a way of controlling each fan individually. So my concern was that we have no way of doing that. I bought a box on eBay. This was a used piece, but I will provide a link to an actual Amazon part. Figured it's used, don't really need it new, but this is going to control each individual fan and it's got five control so i'm going to put that on my box right below my media panel so again pop this out oops that was not supposed to happen but let's work with that so the uh, front panel popped off and i tried pushing on it i gotta push in these tabs push that off all right that's the proper way of removing these i guess Just these tabs Just put that back on I feed all these wires. On this panel, there's a jumper for the beeper on and off. I don't know why I would need that. I'm gonna keep that on though. And again, I gotta remove these two quick connect. So I want that right about here somewhere. I think I'm gonna actually put another screw in there as well, just to keep everything from moving around too much. That holds in there pretty good. And then for an add measure, just put that bracket on there. Same with the other side. Okay, that screws on pretty good and just line this up now i've turned my budget box into something pretty cool got the extra usb ports and all the other devices that can attach and i got a, a thermal take fan controller once that's all hooked up now what i'm going to do is actually install the motherboard let's unbox that motherboard what i decided to put into this device is the asus tough gaming x570 plus wi-fi because i wanted to put the ryzen 9 3950X into here. I'll put a link below. But this motherboard is a budget motherboard and it seems to get great reviews. What's in the box? Obviously we have our motherboard. I'm not gonna remove that from the sleeve right yet. Um, got the rear panel, a couple of connectors for the hard drive, a couple standoffs, a user guide, a coupon, a DVD, certificate, a couple stickers. Actually that's pretty cool. And Wi-Fi antennas. That's like that's all that came in the box. So I'm gonna get those standoffs and we're gonna mount that into my case. So what I mistakenly identified as a few standoffs in that package with the motherboard, that was a mistake. Standoffs were actually with the case package. So there's a few standoffs in that case package, a few screws, a few standoffs. That's where you're gonna find your parts for that. It's been a while since I had to put together a computer, so I kind of forgot that. What you want to do is not have any of the circuitry inside your motherboard touch any metal in the case. That's what the point of these standoffs are. They create a raised space between the case and where the motherboard gets screwed into so that nothing touches. Now be very careful when you're handling a motherboard. You don't want to touch it. You don't want to do this on any kind of carpet or anything because if you pick up any electrical static, you are going to destroy your motherboard. So be very careful when handling this. The motherboard standoffs get installed on all these screw holes here, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spots on this board. So you can install your standoffs in the same holes. Put that back on your ESD bag. Take the same pattern and put the standoffs in the same holes inside your case. So that's what we're going to do right now. So this bag that comes with your motherboard is a special bag. It's designed to prevent any electrical transfer to your motherboard. That's the best place to rest your motherboard if you're putting it down. I think we're going to get one here. When you buy a case for your motherboard, it's important to note the form factor of your motherboard. This is an ATX motherboard. There are other different styles. So an ATX motherboard will fit inside an ATX case. And basically that refers to the size that you can put in there and where the standoffs end up being placed. You don't have the right case, you are not going to fit your motherboard into it properly. Now without some sort of major modifications, which completely is a bad idea. So just pay attention to that. There's ATX, there's mini ATX, there's a few different designations. 
But I'm going to put my nine standoffs in here and then I'm going to put them on there tight with this proper pair of pliers. Basically, you're just going to tighten these down. I got my nine standoffs in there. Before tightening it down, I'm going to just kind of visually check that these standoffs are in the exact spot they need to be because a few extra holes in there that they should not be in. It looks good. So I'm going to tighten all those down. So I just tighten those nine standoffs. Now you'll notice that uh, there's a little bit of dust flaking in here. Before we install it, make sure there's no trace of loose metal in here. So I'm going to blow that out of there. Okay, I got rid of as much dust as I could. Ugh. Now one thing I do see about this case, I'm very close to this. Oh, no, it still works. Okay, so yeah, I thought this piece was going to be too close to the fan, but it actually is not. Looks like everything is going to install in here properly. So one thing I did notice while installing this in this case is it was a little tricky finagling it around this wire. Not a big deal. But also, this fan wire, I had to reposition it. It was coming out the wrong side. So I just wanted it to come out this side just to give it more clearance around any connectors. And uh, now I'm going to screw everything down. Make sure no wires are pinched. Let's put them on loosely for now. Okay, so I got all nine screws in there. They matched up perfectly with the standoffs. I'm gonna just do a tightening. I'm not gonna do it too tight, just hand tight. It's a good looking board. It does look like everything fits in here nicely. I don't see any conflicts. The fan is a little close, but it's not bad. It clears this fan as well, pretty good. Let's unbox this power supply. So I got a 860p Fractal Design power supply. The Fractal Design Ion Plus 860p. I checked the power requirements and this is more than adequate for what I'm going to be running inside here. And it's, it's got some pretty good reviews online. What do we got? Not sure what that is. I honestly don't know what these are. A couple screws, cord, desiccant, a nice bag. That's kind of cool. I don't know why I need this bag, but it seems like a little overkill for a power supply. But, ah, we got wires. All kinds of wires. Oh, look at this. Got another interesting bag. This is interesting packaging. <laughs> well, that's weird. I don't know why they gave you two extra bags, but um, yeah, seems a little, little weird. All right, and then the power supply. Got a nice looking fan. Let's mount this into our case. So looks like everything's gonna clear just fine. It's gonna sit there nicely, completely out of the way of the motherboard. Well, to be honest, the instruction manual was not very helpful. Just four of these. Oh, you know what? These are to tie up your cables. All right, they're Velcro strips. Keep everything tucked away. All right, that's cool. I like that. We got four mounting screws. Gonna install our power supply into our tower right now. One there. Three, and there's a fourth screw. Looks like that's the fourth screw right there. Doesn't really exactly line up with the case. Let me just verify to not make a mistake. Nope, that's where it's going. And it's got the input fan on the bottom of the case. On the bottom of this case, I did not notice until now. It looks like a dust filter, yes. Yeah, that'll, that's nice. Nice little accessory. It'll definitely come in handy. Just gotta keep my eye on that. Clean that out regularly. Let's get that last screw installed. Cool, that's a nice little fit. Just got all our connectors. Oh, zero RPM mode, I guess, if I want to. All my connectors will plug into here. What I like about this is I don't need to connect if I don't have that part. All right, so this is the most exciting part of this build is the processor. I decided to get the AMD Ryzen 9, Ryzen 9 3950X. It's been on the market for a few months. 16 core, 32 thread. So this is where you start when you want to build a computer is find out what processor you want to put in there. For me, I did a little bit of research and I just decided to go with the newest. I want this computer to last 15 years. My last computer lasted 13 years before it blew up on me. So I expect to get 15 out of this baby. The AMD Ryzen 3950X. It'll tell you, you, you have an AMD socket AM4. Step one, find out what processor you want. Find out what socket it has. AMD socket AM4 refers to where it plugs into on your motherboard. You have to find an exact match. So step two would be to find out what motherboard fits your AM4 socket. So I got this motherboard because it, it was a budget board, yet it had all kinds of cool features and it fit the AM4 socket. This is the Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi motherboard. It'll fit that properly. And then once you find out what motherboard you have, you figure out which size it is, which is an ATX, and then get a case for an ATX sized board. If you decided you want to run a smaller case, you just shop for a smaller board that runs your same AM4 socket or whichever socket you're going to be running. So let's unbox this. I'll put a link down below. What do we got? AMD Ryzen 9 3950X. Installation instructions. Cool little sticker. Important. Please read. Nothing else. 
a lot of packaging for that little processor. All right, I'm gonna actually read these instructions. I'll fill you in if you need to know something. I've got a three year warranty on this processor. I'm gonna record my serial number here. That just makes things easier if I have a claim. Instead of tearing everything down and finding the number, I'll just have it in something somewhere handy. One thing is that they recommend liquid cooling. I did my research before buying this and I found someone else doing air cooling and I'm gonna copy their setup. I'm not gonna do liquid cooling. I did liquid cooling once before. It was more headache than anything, really. As long as you're not doing anything too high intense, you should be able to work fine with the air cooling. That being said, they do recommend liquid cooling. All right, so I'm gonna install this processor in the socket. Again, you have to be very careful handling this. Don't ever touch anything on the pins on the back. Grab your processor by the edges only. Take note, it only installs one direction. There it is, out of the box, out of the clamshell. Very careful with it. So you lift this bar up, that's what locks it in. If you have to force it, you're doing something wrong. Now notice it only installs one way. If you put it on this way and it doesn't sink into the socket, well then you did something wrong. Flip it around the proper way, it should drop right in there. Absolutely no forcing. If you have to force anything, don't. Do not force it. Then clip that down. Your processor is in the socket properly. Now AMD completely recommends water cooling. However, instead of water cooling, I'm gonna do air cooling. This is a AM4 D-Type premium cooler. This will do what it needs to do without having to resort to water cooling. I got the Noctua NHD15 SE AM4. And let's unbox it. What do we got? Got a fan. Got the cooler. Holy smokes, that sink is huge. That is way bigger than I thought that was gonna be. Wow. <laughs> That's my initial impression. Holy smokes. And then we got a hardware kit. When you rest this down, keep that plastic on there. Don't rest that anywhere that's gonna get scratched. Any scratches are gonna decrease the effectiveness of that cooler. And we got thermal paste. Get some fan connectors. Cool screwdriver. Instructions, brackets. I'm going to read the instructions and update you if you need to know something. Okay, so one thing we do need to know is that we are going to remove the stock retention brackets, which are these two plastic ones on my board. I'm going to remove that and install these. This is the back side of my motherboard. This is where the processor sits. And these screws are what holds the stock retainer on. And somehow we are going to replace them. And now I have to decide if I want my cooler blowing up or do I want my cooler blowing out. That's gonna determine the mounting bars that we use. Long ones or these short ones. Well, let me see how this fits in here. So it's either gonna fit in here like this or like this. Both ways I can see working just fine. This way or this way. That's a good question. You know, originally I was gonna have it going this way, blowing up the back, but with this fan on the top, that might give me some better than expected cooling. I'm probably going to install it this way because the heat will rise and I think it's gonna escape out of the top of my case quicker than it would if I install it sideways. I think we'll get better airflow front to back, but I think this will cool it just a few degrees quicker by mounting it top to bottom. I think that's the way I'm going to install this. Again, careful of that plate. Don't scratch that, keep that plastic on there. So I'm gonna remove these two brackets and install the longer brackets so we go top to bottom on the floor. Now I noticed that we've got the back plate on here that's pretty loose. So be careful when you take the last screw off, your back plate doesn't fall off. We got these longer screws with the spacer. We'll see if we can get that past those capacitors properly. That is gonna bypass all those capacitors properly. Put that on loosely. Make sure nothing on the board is squished. Let's tighten those down a little. Again, not stupid tight. Yeah, so I'm looking at it and everything is cleared. We're gonna do top to bottom on that. This is the Noctua NT H1 paste. This comes with the heat sink. No need to buy it, that's included. Actually, that's a pretty good paste. I've already looked into that before realizing that it was already included with the processor. So we're gonna put a small glob, it says four to five millimeters. People are gonna complain about the amount of paste I use and the way I spread it. Everybody's got their own way. So I'm gonna put a little bit on there. I'm gonna spread that thin. I actually don't like that. I'm gonna add a little more. I like to cover the entire processor. The point of the paste is to conduct the heat as best as can between the processor and your cooler without leaving any air. Anything that would otherwise be occupied by air is now occupied by paste and it's gonna conduct a little better than air would. I'm sure that looks thick in the camera. When you put that cooler on there, it's gonna squeeze it out. They're telling me to take the fan out of here. I'm gonna disconnect this fan, take that out, remove my cover. Actually, I see dust on that already. Don't ever put that down on the ground. Now there's two posts that that fits over. Two screws down here, fit right over top of the two posts. And we're gonna tighten that down. Not to uh, give you a nice screwdriver, but mine's nicer. So tightening this up squeezes a lot of that paste out. 
That's a spring-loaded screw, I guess. Pouring a little bit of pressure to get it started. I have not gotten it started yet. I got one side started. I'm going to undo the one side a little to get the other one started. This is not going as well as I thought it was going to. There we go. Okay, now I got both sides. So let's tighten that down. And again, tightening this down is going to squeeze out the paste. Get that to seat nicely before you tighten it all the way down. I'm trying to think I should have installed my memory for this. To be honest, that does not look like a lot of clearance to install my memory. I'm going to turn this off and see if my memory will clear. So we're going to unbox this memory before I get too far with this heat sink. What I bought was the G-Skill Ripjaws V. I got the F4-3200C. 32G times 4. So we've got 128 gigabytes of memory here. We are completely maxing out what this motherboard will handle and maxing out what Windows 10 will handle in the box. What do we got? Got some cool sticker and my Rip Jaws V memory. I'm in the middle of installing my heat sink. I just want to see if this will clear. Actually, I'm going to install this now at this point instead of continuing with my heat sink installation. I do see potential problems if I don't install it now. It's good looking heat sink on this memory. A, I don't know if this is the proper orientation. And B, I don't know if this requires me to take out my heat sink. And yes, I need to take off this heat sink to properly install my memory. Let's do that. Now we see what happened to my paste. This is a rare look at the paste. That was a very even squeeze. I don't see any air bubbles that were in there at all. So I'm going to do the same thing when I reinstall. I put another small layer of paste on there. Not as much as before because we already have paste on there. But what I did this for was to install the memory. I got too far ahead of myself. And when you push it down, that clamp will shut. Okay, again. That down far, slide that in, and make sure that clamp on the top snaps into place. I don't ever want to have to upgrade my memory on this motherboard. So right from the get-go, I maxed it out. Hard to justify the price of it, to be honest. That was quite the expense. But half the memory was about half the price. It wasn't a huge difference only getting half of it. Might as well just get all of it if you can afford it. Usually on a motherboard, they clip on both sides. This motherboard just does the one side. I've read reviews about this motherboard. It's a little unconventional, but it looks like it works. Now with all of that in place, now we're gonna reinstall that heat sink. Again, a little bit of paste. Don't hate me because I spread it like this. To be honest, these heat pipes are right up on the memory. I'll take this down and see if it makes any difference. See if we need to reorient this cooler or if it's just the right distance. Okay, so I'll tighten these two screws up. And then I notice that these two heat pipes right up on the memory. I don't like that. I do not like that. I'm going to have to take this off and have it blow front to back instead of bottom to top. I don't like the way it's resting right on that memory. I need to have to take this off. I have to put on the different brackets. There's absolutely not enough room. Again, do not rest that on the ground. Not enough room between memory and the cooler installing it that way. So with this particular motherboard and this memory configuration, you could install top to bottom, but it was very tight and I don't like that. So again, my third application of paste. I'm going to put it on thinner than the first two times. Little coat. We still have the paste on from the first two times. And now instead of top to bottom orientation, we're going front to back orientation. And that is going to clear the memory much better. And my memory is much more free. Nothing hitting on anything right there. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to reinstall this fan. This has an arrow showing which direction is blowing. And clip this to it sinks. That side is fine. There's not much room on this side. Stick my finger in. Yeah, it worked. And the second fan is an optional, but I think I will install that. Might as well maximize my cooling on this. I think it'll, it definitely will clear the memory in this configuration. No, it will not. Okay, so what I'm going to do is install this. No, we won't install here because we have no clearance. We won't install here because we also have no clearance. So unfortunately, we only have one fan. I imagine one fan is adequate. You're gonna be running some heavy loads. I don't know if I would recommend this cooler because you cannot attach a second fan. Now I imagine I could turn this cooler bottom to top and attach two fans, but it's gonna hit the memory, which uh, maybe if you got shorter memory, it would work. I don't know if that's possible. I don't know if they make shorter memory. Just a bad configuration between all that, but one fan. I'm looking at the size of this thing. It's a monster. I think it'll do just fine to keep everything cool. Plus I got the top fan right here. I think we'll have enough airflow on this. I decided to go budget on my video card. I got the AMD Radon RX 570. It's not a high-end card but it is a pretty good card it'll run up to three monitors i believe and i think if i want to go six i just add another video card or whatever i want to do i don't know i mean it's not high-end but for what i'm doing it's going to be perfectly fine i believe 
what's in the box. Nice little box. So what do we got here? Well, we got a cable. That's a lot of packaging for one little cable. Driver information, installation guide, how to achieve OC plus clock rate. Thank you for your purchase. Card and nothing else. Got a nice little ESD bag. It's a good looking board. Oh, it's got a protective coating. That's nice. Metal back. Got lots of copper in there. That looks like that's going to dissipate. It's pretty good. Oh, got another plastic coating on this. No, they're just shiny. Well, that's a well protected card. Not sure what that was all about. Looks like we got one and there's another three ports and then another one under this spot. I like those plugs. Eliminates any kind of dust, I suppose, drifting its way back into the card. But yeah, look at all the copper. That's a pretty good design. That's a nice setup. I don't believe that's ever going to get too hot. Looks like it's designed to properly dissipate all the heat to fans. I see my motherboard has two spots for a card. One spot has metal belt around it. it looks like it's designed to take extra weight from our video card. And then there's the one spot down below. Ideally, I would put my card on the bottom one to maximize airflow around my processor. I think putting it here is going to restrict airflow, but this is designed to hold weight better. The top one. So let's put it in the top one. I don't think my processor is really going to get too hot. If it does, I will just have to remove the card into a different spot and come up with a different ventilation design. So this takes uh, two slots. I'm going to remove two of these. Make sure it clears everything. It looks like it's going to clear everything. Everything looks good. Looks like it's going to fit. They put this cover on there, which is nice, but I wish I'd known that for trying. And then make sure that clip on the end snapped properly. Now, the one problem I see here is if I ever want to remove this card, well, I guess I could get a long screwdriver in there, long angle tool to depress that snappy clip. I cannot access this on the actual card because of this cooler. If I ever want to remove this card, I am going to have to probably remove my air cooler or use a long pointed angled instrument to carefully remove that clip. There is no clearance to put anything. Yeah, there's no way for me to get my finger back there to remove this card ever again without moving this. So I'm just going to put the screws back in this card to hold it in place. Two screws. I guess it's not blocking as much airflow around it as I thought it was going to. However, I can never undo this card easily without finicking with a specially designed tool or taking this off. It would have been better installed in the slot below, I believe, but it's done. That's what it's going to be. I just, just want to check the clearances of this. If I install this door, I can see that I'm never going to get a fan installed on the inside of this because this CPU cooler is zero clearance. I'm hoping I can get a fan installed on this bottom one. It looks like there's enough clearance, but nothing's can install on the inside of this. I might be able to install one on the outside, but it's going to look pretty ridiculous on the outside. And then I always have the issue of where do I thread the cable if it's installed on the outside. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Let's actually unbox the hard drives right now. I got two hard drives. So my idea here is to do a mirror ray. Penny per penny. It was cheaper to get these than a small hard drive. We got 12 terabytes times two, and in the mirror configuration, it's still only 12 terabytes. If one drive fails, all I gotta do is replace the failed drive with an exact drive, and uh, my 12 terabytes of information will be replicated onto the other hard drive, just in case of a failure. So let's install these into the case. Now with my case, it came with these brackets. I mount those to the hard drive. Hmm, there's no screws on those. I guess that just fits into there. That fits on there. There's nowhere for a screw to fit whatsoever. And that slides into place. I want a little more airspace around my hard drive. That'll allow for a little bit of airflow. I'm gonna put this in here for safekeeping. I can put another three more in here if I needed to. Got airflow over top of those hard drives. I got all my critical components mounted without being wired, just making sure everything will fit. The only issues I did see are I cannot vent this bottom to top because this will hit the memory that I chose. And in this configuration, I can only put one fan on there instead of two. The second fan will either hit the memory or hit the components on the motherboard. So that's not ideal. That would have been great great getting more airflow on this air cooler. Plan B to get airflow would have been to have a second fan installed on here to blow right on top of the cooler. However, the door is so close. Looks like the only way is to mount a fan on the outside of the door, which not what I expect to do. Don't like the idea, but I might have to. However, it looks like there's enough room for a second fan. I will check that in a minute, actually. Uh, the only other issue I have with this case, actually, I guess the issues are all around this air cooler because I can't fit a second fan on it. I can't fit a fan on the door. And if I ever decide to remove this graphics card, that is gonna have to come off in order to access the clip that's holding it to the board. Plan B would have been to put this board in the slot down below, but that slot 
is not built for the weight of a heavy duty card. Not saying that this is a heavy duty card, but I mean, you got a reinforced slot. Might as well make use of the reinforced slot. We'll try this configuration. If things overheat inside, I'm gonna have to either move this to a different slot to get a little more airflow or go water cooled. That's gonna be plan B. Let's see how it works. Uh, it's got the fan above this, which is a great idea. It's got spaces in the door for a little more airflow around that heat sink. So we're unboxing the Noctua NSF 12A case fan. It's a 120 millimeter premium fan. It's designed to be quiet, very quiet. So what's in the box? We got the fan, two cables, two rubber connectors. I guess that's designed to prevent vibration. A couple standard screws, screw connectors, instruction book. I'm gonna fit this to my door and see if there's room inside this. So we got these rubber connectors. I guess that's designed to minimize any kind of vibration. And vibration would translate into noise. So just kind of pull those through. Find out which way your airflow is. There's an arrow on the fan. I want it blowing into the case. I want that wire to be positioned, I guess, somewhere around here. Just pull those tabs. Now everything is connected on there. Got a vibration free. Comes with the screws if you want to mount with the screws. That's a tight looking case because of this device. But let's see if everything fits. That actually does fit. We do have clearance between this fan and the heat sink. That looks like it's going to work. I'm still thinking of putting the other fan on the outside just to maximize airflow. That means that wire is going to have to run on the outside. This case actually has two grommets. So I'm going to have to figure a way of trailing that wire through the grommets and connecting that to the front control panel. I'm going to put this rear panel on this motherboard. And I'm starting to realize that I should have put this on before I put the motherboard into the case. I think I skipped a step a long time ago. I screwed up. I should have put this piece on at the beginning. What I'm going to have to do now is undo all nine of the screws holding the motherboard in place. Move it enough to slide that part into the case and slide it back. Refasten those nine screws. Uh, the nine screws are very difficult to get to with this in place. But I'm going to have to do what I have to do. I went too fast installing this. should have thought it through. I'm going to have to make sure I unscrew these two screws that hold the graphics card in place. Along with the nine screws. And we should be good. So I undid those two screws holding the graphics card in place. The nine on the board. I did have one screw down here. Instead of it unscrewing from the board, it unscrewed the standoff from the case. So a little bit of a hiccup, but it should be workable. I'm going to use two hands, move everything around along in order to install that trim plate. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Everything shifted over. Now make sure this goes into your case. Yes, this is difficult. It should snap right in there. There we go. It should snap in a place like that. Now let's put the board back in its spot. All right, so I have connected everything I can. I got all the wires coming out of my power supply. I have wire connecting to the main part on the motherboard. And then there's another connector at the top that needs to be connected to the motherboard. My video card, the hard drives are all connected. The graphics card is connected. I connected everything I could on the front panel. So one thing I did notice is I only have one USB 3 connector on my board. So this one is connected properly. This one is not connected. And then same with the audio panel. I connected this one to the motherboard. This one is not connected. This USB port is connected, the USB 2. So that's not working. These two are not going to be working because they're not connected. All these USB 2s are connected. This USB 3 is connected. This audio port is connected. I've got a fan connector that's connected. And I'm sure these are connected to the uh, motherboard through a USB port. Fan 1 is going to be my front one. Fan 2 is going to be my top one. Fan 3 is going to be my back one. Fan 4 is eventually going to be an externally mounted fan blowing in into the case from the outside. I'm gonna mount it on the outside of the panel and fan five is gonna be on the inside of the panel blowing in. So everything's connected. I'm going to put the back panel on and hook up a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse and see if we can get something happening in the BIOS. I don't have an operating system in yet. It hasn't arrived yet, but I just wanna make sure everything powers up like it should. See if I can get put it into the BIOS menu. And if that happens and I can get a reading on the hard drives, then we know we're on our way to getting this thing running. If there's an error I guess we'll figure out shortly. I routed all the wires I could through the back side just to clean up the installation and improve the airflow inside the case. I'm going to tuck the wires as best as I can into here and put that cover on. I don't need this cover off during this testing. Let's see if I can tuck the wires in. That actually worked well. The wires are hidden from view. This cover went on well. I was going to plug this in to check the connections and I realized I don't have a monitor plug that'll take either the old connection or the newer 
well I guess that's still an old connection on this new motherboard the motherboard connection only has HDMI looking inputs I was hoping to power this up without going through the graphics card because I just want to make sure everything's running before going through the graphics card what I'm gonna have to do here actually is power this on and hope my graphics card is working Feeling that, I'm going to have to buy some sort of adapter to connect this monitor to this, the motherboard only. All right, my monitor is on, power is on, connected. And I'm gonna hook up my keyboard. I got my old computer here because it died and I haven't had time to put it away. So I'm gonna hook up my keyboard and a USB mouse. And I'm about to turn this on for the first time. I'm gonna turn the switch on back here. See some lights, this is good sign. I didn't know this motherboard lit up like that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, all right. And let's press the switch. Okay, power is on. Cable is not connected is what it's saying. So this graphics card is not, it's not recognizing my graphics card for some reason. Okay, I have a light on in there. Grab my flashlight. And this says it's on the first light up there. I don't know what that means. Well, there we go. I found an HDMI monitor. The old monitors I have here do not have HDMI. So I plugged that into my graphics card instead of on the motherboard. I rebooted and I hit the delete button and got the BIOS menu up and immediately the monitor started working. I also mounted this fan on the outside. I know it looks kind of stupid. Maybe one day I'll upgrade it to some sort of a LED type thing. There we go. Yep, the connection to that fan is not all that great, but everything seems to be working good. Uh, the front panel works good, as you can tell, and an alarm went off when the fan got disconnected. Now I just have to wait for my operating system to come in and find a way of installing that, partitioning things properly, get some connectors. This is not gonna be my monitor. I had to steal this off another device. My plan is to use my two old monitors. I have one sitting this way. I got another monitor behind this one. I'm gonna have to mount properly. And I also have a monitor down on the ground here that I don't use. I'm planning on using all three on that graphics card, so I'm going to have to buy adapters, HDMI to this legacy blue pin connector. I don't even know what they call it. For now, I'm happy about today. Today worked out well. Everything looks like it's working fine so far. All right, so we just covered how to build a computer. A little long-winded perhaps, but uh, it's a little more in-depth than perhaps some others will cover. Like I said, the one part I did not cover is the actual physical wiring of the components. That part would have taken a little long to detail and it's somewhat self-explanatory. Hopefully you could figure that out on your own. Uh, one thing I also did not cover is any of the benchmarks or the scores, the frame rates or anything that this achieves. This is not a high-end graphics computer, but it's got a pretty sweet red count 16 cores 32 threads so that's pretty cool perhaps in the next video i will go over some of the benchmarks some of the scores it'll achieve if you want to see that let me know below otherwise i might not do that again five different ways you can support me you can like this video subscribe to my channel comment anything below share this video and also check out my amazon wish list i have a little amazon wish list if you want to buy something for me that'd be pretty cool i'd appreciate that and stick around for some other videos. Thanks for watching this video, I appreciate it.